Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Dalrin and we are back on the PTR checking out some of the different drops that can come from the Mythic Plus chest. In a really interesting decision, Blizzard decided to change how Corruption Gear will function, particularly with Mythic Plus keys. If you're someone who does Mythic Plus keys on a regular, or somebody who doesn't, you might want to pay attention to the patch 8.3. As Blizzard decided to make it that every single drop from 8.3 from a Mythic Plus cache is going to be 100% guaranteed to have a corruption effect unless it is an effect like a trinket. Corruption is replacing Warforging and Titan Forging for all gear upgrades from every aspect of the game. So this system should be quite huge and should be quite good when it comes to actually replacing a true and tried system that we are all, all used to. So it's very important for everyone to test this as best as possible in PTR and give their opinions on some of the corruptions. And in this video, I'll be doing exactly that. So I spent about, I want to say, what, two hours or so just opening Mythic Plus chests on a couple different characters with a couple different roles to work for. And I also was able to test some of these corruptions as we are only a few weeks away before the release of patch 8.3 which is going to be on the 14th of January 15th for the EU servers. There's of course a little bit of a fear of the balancing with some of these corruptions. With Blizzard replacing Warforging and Titanforging, how is this new system going to affect some of the gear drops and changes? Are certain corruptions going to be way stronger than others? And are certain corruptions looking like they're pretty broken and really need some tuning for 8.3? My hope for corruption is to have all these different corruption effects as close to each other as possible in terms of effectiveness. And if you are going to have very powerful corruptions for, let's say, a very high amount of corruption that applies the negative debuffs for your character, it's fine for a single corruption effect to be powerful as long as the weak corruptions put together make up the difference. So to be honest, compared to the Titan Forging and Warforging system, this is a much more complicated system that does need a little bit of math. So for Blizzard, I can only imagine that this is a little bit of a nightmare to truly balance. Let's take a look at some of the corruptions that are more notable currently for the patch 8.3. The first corruption I was able to get on my rogue when I first logged into PTR was the one that spawns a void tentacle to assault the enemy for a little bit of shadow damage. This corruption on its own was on a lower tier, that means it gave me less of a detrimental effect with a lower number of corruption, but it also didn't have quite as powerful of an effect when the corruption itself procs. So this corruption effect right now in PTR has a very low chance to spawn, but it is reported that it can spawn multiple tentacles in a row. However, the chance for those tentacles to spawn in the first place is really, really low. I would guess that maybe a class that has multiple sources of damage, from dot ticks to maybe pet attacks, and you have multiple different attacks happening all at the same time, maybe like, you know, a lot of hits but a lot of smaller hits, that might increase your chances for tentacles to spawn. So a class like an Outlaw Rogue or maybe something like a Warlock, for example, that's all about Chaos Bolts and a couple of different abilities sprinkled here and there, less abilities that have been used throughout our rotation means probably a lower chance for some of these effects to proc. Either way, I don't know if the tentacles play by RPPM or anything like that, but it does seem like it has a very low chance to spawn. The tentacle does do a lot more damage now, and even if I got my tentacle at a lower tier, as in it shouldn't be quite as strong, it still did quite a bit. In the past, the tentacle would do maybe like 18,000 damage over 6 seconds, but now it can do up to 80. So if you get a higher tier roll for this corruption, it actually can do quite a bit of damage. I would guess that the tentacle maybe has a higher chance to proc in AoE situations, but even in single target it does quite a bit of damage. I feel like this would be equivalent to maybe a trinket worth of damage, but definitely not the strongest corruption out there, although when it does proc, it is quite decent damage. The next corruption we have, I actually got it off a of weapon, so this was really cool to test out with the weapon, however it doesn't really work, but the idea behind it is awesome. It spells and abilities have a chance to show you the truth and which increases your cooldown recovery rate by 50% for 10 seconds. So on a proc, theoretically, you should start seeing a lot of your abilities start coming back whenever this ability does proc. However, after DPSing a train dummy for a little bit, this effect simply just does not proc. I'm gonna guess it is bugged. That or it has an incredibly low chance to proc. Essentially, this could be one of the better corruptions. For abilities to come back slightly faster, that means for mages to get more combustions rolling, or for Dust Warlocks to get more Infernals down, 
for rogues to get more vendettas or any classes for you to get your cooldowns back a little bit faster i feel like while it might misalign with some of your trinkets it still will increase your overall damage output for the most part however because of the inconsistency of how this effect procs i cannot guarantee it hopefully it'll get it into a condition where by the time patch is released that we actually get to see just how often this effect procs could potentially be a really good effect but nothing i can say much about it from here on afterwards i was able to roll one of the strongest by far the best corruption effect that is available on ptr right now and this one will need to get nerfed this one is called echoing void it has a chance to store up a charge of echo and void and then on ability usage it also has a chance to release those charges of echo and void each doing a percentage of your health in damage so this effect on its own procs a lot so you can build it up very quickly and when it procs to release those charges they will also release very quickly so you can get yourself maybe like 10 stacks very very quickly so 10 stacks times what 2.5% of your health is going to be about, what, 25% of your health worth as shadow damage that will be released every ticking second. This effect also affects AoE as well. So if you're someone who wants to do AoE or even single target, then this effect ends up being probably the strongest effect right now in terms of corruptions that can give you a direct damage increase. What's crazy about this ability is it seems like it's an obvious choice for anything based on AoE, but in single target for my Outlaw it ends up being, with simply how often it procs, my best damage and ability. What Blizzard might have to do is they might have to adjust how much percentage of health that this uses because of how consistently it procs, or adjust how often this ability procs, and then keep the percentage uses. But right now, if you are looking at patch 8.3 and the Blizzard does not change Echoing Void, this will be the corruption you'll want to aim for if you want raw DPS increase. The next effect looks very promising, but it wasn't nearly as good in practice. I ended up getting one of the better weapons for Outlook with a socket, so on PTR that would have been incredible. But the effect it has is called the Twilight Devastation, which makes it where the corrupted item has a chance to shoot out a Twilight Beam in front of me that does 4% of my maximum health worth of damage. Now you would think that this effect is better than the last one we talked about because this effect does more percentage of my health than the other ability, but the way that the beam functions on single target is simply not that good. Even in AoE, it does quite a considerable amount of damage, but the proc chance for this one is just so much lower, and if the last corruption that we looked at was about as, you know, procy as this one, then both of them will be very, very close and similar. So either this one needs to have more proc chance for it, or a higher percentage of health that it's using to do damage, or the other one just needs to get nerfed, and be very similar to how this one does maybe like a very low proc chance either way this one is really not terrible for single target and it's not terrible for aoe either i think this one actually benefits massive groups if you're able to line them up as you can see the beam doesn't actually shoot in front of you the beam kind of shoots above you and just travels forward in almost like a snake line which is a little bit weird to figure out where you should be positioning and it will mean that you need to be very careful in which direction you're aiming for any of the caster classes, it'll be a little bit harder for you to get the most value out of this because there is a set range to this ability, it seems. It does travel to a, a set distance. So if you're too far from enemies and it doesn't quite reach all the way through like a massive trash bag, then you will be losing out on some of the extra damage that it does. But overall, not a terrible uh, corruption. It's just not quite as good as the last one we looked at. The next corruption effect is called Void Ritual. This one increases all of your secondary stats and keeps stacking until the effect is gone. The Void Ritual is an interesting corruption as it actually has some synergy with other players around you. So if you are using this corrupted piece of gear and you have other players with Void Ritual, then it actually feeds one another for a higher chance for this corruption to proc. So, if you have other players with Void Ritual inside of a raid, like two or three people, this corruption could be very consistent for a lot of you. But solo by itself, it doesn't really proc a lot. The secondary stats increases are quite nice, and this will be advantageous for any classes that enjoy, you know, utilizing multiple stats for damage. Like, 
A assassination rogue would probably be the best choice out of all the rogue specs. As assassination has uses for the critical strike, which is damage, but also common point generation. Haste, which is energy regen, so common point generation, but also more ticks for your bleeds. You also have mastery, which is simply raw damage for bleeds and poisons, which is where majority of your damage or bigger damages come from. And versatility, which increases all damage that you do. Bleeds, poisons, but also a bit of that physical damage. So any classes that utilize multiple stats at a time, those classes are going to find some usefulness out of this corruption if you do end up getting it. But again, this one is a lot stronger when it's used in packs. I feel like this one is a good Mythic Plus corruption if you do have a couple of players that are running same corruption, but there's probably going to be stronger corruptions with just raw damage increases that will probably be the meta for majority of the PvE content. So this corruption is more of a raiding corruption. I feel like this would actually be really good for healers. This could actually be decent for tanks as well. And it's really not a terrible one. Just not quite as ahead as some of the other raw damage corruptions. The next corruption effect is actually very simple, but I decided to show you guys this effect anyway, because I think any of you guys that play a class that's all about crit are going to like this one. It reads, your critical hits have a chance to increase your critical strike by 41 for 15 seconds, stacking up to 5 times. So if you are able to play a class that's all about crits and you get lucky on crits like an Outlaw Rogue, you're able to get yourself a nice crit buff that can stack. Again, I believe that this tier of corruption was one of the higher ones, maybe a mid tier if not completely three, rank 3 tier, but this in terms of raw stats procs quite often. It isn't always possible to balance this buff and maintain it at 5 stacks completely. I feel like any classes that are all about managing as much crit as possible, like Beastmaster Hunters and Out Rogues, will find a way to utilize this corruption, but it has a chance on critical strikes. So it doesn't proc off of any ability, but it primarily procs off of crits. So this one is actually quite cool. I like the juggle playstyle for it. It has basically 100% uptime as long as you're critting and hitting an enemy and I overall thought that this one was kind of cool There's a couple other ones that give you random procs for stats We'll take a look at one in this video, but all those proc ones for stats actually are kind of fun to play with Another simple corruption effect that gives you secondary stats is the one for haste the haste one is Really weird. It gives you a boatload of haste for only four seconds So the duration of this corruption does not last long at all and in terms of finding moments where you can actually use this haste, it's a little difficult to figure out what kind of class would utilize this. Haste or any of the other secondary stats for a prolonged period of time, even like 10 seconds, can sometimes be a huge game changer. Or even something, let's say, lasts only 5 seconds but has a chance to proc back to back, that could be pretty huge too. I guess there could be a couple classes that play with energy or maybe play with damage over time abilities, maybe a class with snapshotting, but most of those snapshotting mechanics have been gone for a bit. But if there was, let's say, a class that could utilize haste in order to snapshot their damage over time abilities or something, I think that would be pretty cool. Testing out at least on my Paladin, it didn't really feel like it was incredibly useful. If you can proc back to back, if you get lucky, then you can get quite a bit of value of it. But this trait on its own or this corruption can proc quite a lot throughout an encounter so I guess all that haste can be summed up together it's just the prolonged version of haste doesn't really feel like a bloodlust it feels like momentary bloodlust but sometimes you can't really get the most value out of it it might end up simming a lot better than what I'm predicting here but in terms of actual gameplay it felt a little bit weird to play with the next corruption is called Glimpse of Clarity. It has a chance to, on ability usages, to give you a buff where the next ability that has a cooldown when used while Glimpse of Clarity is up will reduce the cooldown of that ability by 3 seconds. I was really trying to get this corruption effect on my Paladin and it was taking so long for me to get that corruption effect I gave up and I ended up getting it on my Mage. On my Mage it does have some value because, you know, Mages are all about using Fire Blast in order to extend this mastery buff that you try to juggle throughout your rotation. So for Fire Mages, is actually quite a bit of merit to them using this type of uh, corruption. But for a Paladin, I feel like with so many of your abilities being tied behind cooldown, will simply just allow you more Holy Power generation and get through your rotation that much easier and faster. Either way, this was kind of a cool corruption to play with. It doesn't seem to proc all that often, and when it does, it can store up in charges at least. 
last time on PTR it had this capability. But here on my mage, it might have procced here and there, but it's very difficult to track it in terms of how often it happened because I'm using my fire blast a lot. So there's a good chance it was consumed almost immediately by fire blast from time to time. But Overall, really good value on paper, but in terms of actual testing, it doesn't seem like currently in this patch of PTR, there's no consistent way to play with this trait or this corruption and really just figure out the kinks behind it yet. And then the final corruption that is a unique corruption that I was able to get in my two hour session of spam, creating characters and copying them to PTR, just trying to see what kind of corruption effects I can get is Ooze Blood. I got this one in particularly on my warrior for plate gear while I had my spec set up for protection. I was in protection spec and I was trying to get gear for protection to see if I had anything that plays with armor. I thought it would be very interesting to test out. Either way, this is Ooze Blood, the actual corruption itself, Gushing Wound. The enemy does bleed for quite a bit of damage and this was very consistent in the opener, but this corruption itself just isn't as consistent as some of the other ones. The damage itself is a little bit underwhelming. Maybe if you're a class that doesn't have a lot of bleeds and you would love to have a way to get rogues out of stealth, then this would be maybe something useful in PvP. But in terms of just hitting a single train dummy, this might not be all that great. It could potentially be a good AoE cleave essence or a corruption, but I haven't really had the time to test it too much in PTR. I was really just trying to see just how consistent it is when it comes to hitting the enemy. I feel like on a class that doesn't have any bottlenecking downtime like an arms warrior, you would probably see this corruption pop up a lot more often. But at least an arms warrior, it ended up being kind of underwhelming. And especially compared to some of the other corruptions we talked about today this one just not quite as powerful so plenty of room for blizzard to buff this one i don't think i can really say anything definitive when it comes to corruption gear and corruption system yet i want to wait until patch 8.3 when the corruption system fully releases because maybe there is some internal build for blizzard that has the right adjusted numbers for damage for all the corruptions but in the perfect world i would imagine most corruptions to be very very close to each other in terms of viability like certain people will get a corruption that has a very powerful effect but you'll have so much corruption as a negative debuff that you'll only keep one while other people will get a bunch of pieces with smaller effects but together all those effects end up rounding it out or getting it as close to as possible in terms of damage value or effectiveness increase if you're a tank or a healer just whatever class and role you're good at effectiveness increase equivalent to that one powerful corruption but i guess we'll just have to wait and see what's going to look like but right now it does seem like certain corruptions are busted and overpowered and actually just a flat damage increase some of them have really interesting play styles but some of them just don't even function properly in PTR yet, so there's not really a lot we can test. I'm hoping majority of them do come out working, and it still is my instinct right now that this system of corruption might be what we'll be seeing in the future of Shadowlands. So Blizzard said corruption is only going to be there for BFA, but I feel like a modified version, if it works out properly, will continue into Shadowlands. Unless they end up bringing Titanforging and Warforging back for Shadowlands or a similar system of just flat item level upgrades. But we'll just have to wait and see. Corruption, I feel like, could be essentially a really good setup. But as long as Blizzard is there balancing it out, but without having a vendor for us to test all the different corruption effects and benefits on PTR and give feedback, all we can do is right now just log on PTR with Mythic Plus Chested Characters and try to get a bunch of corruptions and give feedback like this. So this is my feedback on some of the corruptions, some of the strongest, some of the lesser stronger, but this is my video on corruptions. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Let me know which corruption is your favorite, but pretty sure your favorite one is going to be the one that does the most amount of damage. So look out for Void Echo. Thank you all, and I'll see all of you in the next one.